What's going on guys welcome back to the C programming tutorial series for beginners in today's video we're going to talk about functions so let us get right into it. Alright so let us talk about functions in C. Now functions are quite simple what a function is is a block of code that is reusable that we only have to write once and then we can use it over and over again and we have used functions already and we also have a main function right here. So basically a function has a return value data type in this case an integer a name in this case main then we have parentheses with parameters or no parameters. And then we have these uh, curly brackets here that specify the scope of the function. So what is part of the function and inside of it, we have statements that belong to the function. So the main function is quite special because we don't call it actually when we define another function, we have to call it. Uh, but the main function is the entry point of the program. But another function that we have used quite often is the printf function. So when we call printf, uh, hello world, for example, this is actually a function, even though we didn't write it ourselves. This print f thing is a function. And this is the parameter of the function. So in today's video, we're going to learn how to write our own functions. And we're going to start with a very simple function that is just going to add two numbers. So the goal is to define a function that takes two values, for example, um, 10 and 20 and returns 30 as a result. So it adds 10 plus 20. Now, if we want to do that in C, we need to do it above the main function because we cannot use something in the main function that is not defined above the main function. So if I want to add a function int add and I want to have parameters int a and int b, for example, um, I have to define it up here. Now, it's considered a good practice or a best practice to define the functions up here, but implement them down below. So what you want to do is you want to define the function signature up here like that by ending it with a semicolon. But then you want to uh, actually implement the function down here. So you want to say integer a integer b. And then here you want to define the actual function and what it does. Alternatively, you can also do it right um, in the top. So you don't have to do it like that. You can also just define it here. And it will work. But if you do that, and the functions are a bit larger, the main function will be at the very bottom. You don't want to have that. So you just want to have an overview of all the functions that you can use. Uh, and then you want to have the implementations below the main function. It's just for readability it doesn't affect the uh, functionality really. Uh, but what we want to do here a very simple thing, we want to add a and b and we want to return the results. So since we have a return value data type integer, we have to return something we have to write return. <clears throat> sorry, we have to write return a plus b in this case. So what this does is we now have a function with a return value uh, data type uh, integer called add and this function takes two parameters, two integer parameters, two numbers. And then as a result, we get um, the addition. So we get the sum of those two numbers. If we now want to use that, what we have to do is we have to just call add and then for example, 10 and 20, like that. Now, this calls the function, this executes the addition, but we don't have anything to store it in. So what this does here is it doesn't print the result, we don't get 30 on the screen by just returning return means that we get this as a result of the calculation. But we now have to do something with that value. So this here, this statement here is the same as just writing 30. It doesn't have an effect, right? I can write 30, but it doesn't have an effect here. So it, it doesn't do anything, we need to take that value and assign it to a variable. For example, we can say in C is the result of add 10 and 20. Or we can also say print F, and then percent D backslash N and then add and here 30 and 40, for example. And we can also do the same thing here with C to just see that it works. Let's maybe swap the order. Uh, so we can do it like that. And by returning, we get the result as uh, as a value that we can then use for uh, other things. So now let's just run this real quick. Let's say GCC main C O main and then main like that. And you can see 30 and 70 is the result. So we now have this function that we wrote once and we can now always call it. This might not make a lot of sense for an addition uh, addition function because that is literally a one liner. This is not really a useful function. However, if we have a function that is a little bit more complicated, 
uh, it definitely makes sense to to use functions. So for example, we might have a function that uh, applies a complex sorting algorithm onto a list, for example, then you don't want to always have to re implement this algorithm every time. So let's say uh, this function is not add, but it's called sort. And as a parameter here, we have, uh, we haven't talked about arrays yet. But let's just say we have an array of integers, we're going to talk about this in a future video, uh, actually in the next video, I think. But we have this list. And now we have a set of instructions here, uh, multiple lines like that, um, with loops and if statements and all that, and this sorts a list. So we get a list and we return a sorted list. Now, every time I want to sort something, I don't want to always write all of these lines at the particular um, position, I want to define this function that does all that on the parameter. And then all I need to do in order to sort a list is I need to call the sort function. This is all I have to do. This is all I want to do. Uh, so this is what we use functions for. However, a function doesn't have to necessarily have a uh, return data type. So for example, or actually does have to have a data type, but we don't always have to return something. Some functions do something, but they don't return something. For example, let's say we wanted to find a simple function that just says hello world, five times. So when have a loop that says hello world, five times, or that prints a certain message five times, such a function doesn't have a return value, it just does something. So what I can do here is I can use a void, uh, void meaning basically nothing, or empty or whatever. Um, and then I can say that the function is called say and then maybe we pass. Uh, actually, I don't want to pass a string. So we're just going to say, say hello, like that, without a parameter. Uh, and then we're going to implement it down below void say underscore. Hello. And all this function does is it starts a loop for int i equals zero i being less than five, for example, I plus plus. And then we're going to say print f hello world backslash n. Now we can say compile again. We have a problem we have uh, a reference to add even though it's not implemented, of course. And of course, we need to call the function, right? Otherwise, it doesn't execute. There you go. And you can see it does what it does. And it doesn't have a return value. So we don't even have a return statement, because void basically means that we don't return anything. Uh, we can change the return value to something else. So if we don't want to return a number, we can also return a list, we can return uh, a custom type, we can return doubles, we can return characters, whatever, but you need to specify it here. And if you don't want to return anything, you just specify void void basically means this function does something but it doesn't have a return value. Um, now, one thing that is considered also best practice as far as I know is to, um, to fill this, uh, these empty parentheses here, if we don't have parameters with an additional void, just, um, just for readability or for syntax for better syntax. I'm not sure if that is actually best practice. But in university, at least we learned that this is how we we should do it. So I'm not sure if this is uh, universally a best practice thing. But uh, we were told that this is uh, an important thing to do, uh, or at least a uh, more professional thing to do. But yeah, this is this is what you can do with functions, you can you can take parameters, you can process them in a certain way. You can, of course, also call functions inside of functions. Now, for example, let me show you one interesting thing that we can do is we can uh, define functions that return uh, a Boolean. So we can say, for example, here include std bool dot h. And then we can say, for example, that we define the function uh, bool is underscore even, for example, and then we get a number here, integer n. And the function should essentially just be um, bool is even and n. And then we return n modulo two being equal to zero. So what this basically does is this statement here returns a boolean. So it checks if n divided by two of the remainder of that is zero. And if that is the case, this function returns a true. So what we can do now is we can just say if, and then for example, uh, let's define a variable here int a and then we can say scanf percent d 
pointer to a and then we can say okay if is underscore even a we can say print f a is even like that i'm not going to do the else here um but this is what we can do for example we can use functions like that so if i pass seven nothing's going to happen if i pass six we can see a is even and this is what we can do right so this is just a very basic thing um you can define a function with a return value you can add multiple parameters you can also have no parameters the value of a function is that you have some logic that is usually not a one-liner like I showed you today, but a complex algorithm, for example, 20 lines or 10 lines, sometimes five lines. You want to keep it more modular. So basically you have functions and you can use them like Lego blocks. So for example, maybe you have a function for squaring numbers, a function for adding numbers. Then you have a third function that makes uh, use of those two functions to do a more complex combination. This is, again, just a trivial example here. Um, but this is what you can do. And you can also use recursive functions. We're not going to talk about recursion here uh, in more detail, but you can have a function that calls itself and so on. You, ha you can have functions that call other functions. Uh, I mean, that's fundamentally what we're doing in the main function, right? We have this entry point function. It calls other functions. They can, again, call other functions and so on. But that's the basic thing that you need to know about functions in C. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.